Overpowered Barbara Rose and Mike Bobinchek's 167. Again, fueled by strikes in their second round appearance, this competitive duo had the right formula to defeat the tough team of Ruby Davis and Reno Gallette, 221 to 178. Then in the quarterfinals, Melanowski and Switzler had their toughest match of the tournament thus far, but they hung on to defeat Betty Palicka and Cleve Johnson by two, 227 to 225, thus putting them into today's semifinals. Matching up against Malinowski and Switzler today is Port Clinton's Jennifer Newman and Mark Powers. Newman and Powers' road to today's semifinal wasn't as easy as witnessed in their first round match against Carol and Neil Sylvester. Even though they scored a 203 to 180 victory, they had to overcome early nerves and five open frames. In their second round match against Gloria and Barry Ober, Newman and Powers again had trouble finding their mark. However, in the end, they overcame six open frames and won 189-166. Then in the quarterfinals, Jennifer and Mark put it all together in a very solid performance, defeating Lynn Zuba and Rich Anton, 214 to 199. So that's how they got there. Ted and I are all set to call the match for you. We'll be back with this semifinal round match on 10 Pin Challenge right after this. The Pin Challenge is sponsored in part by Thistledown, racing Wednesday through Sunday, first race, 1.30 p.m., and by Speedy Muffler King. Visit your local Speedy for all your undercar repair needs. What you want, baby, we got it. What you need, you know we got it. All you really want is a little respect. Just a little bit. Speedy Muffler King knows that all customers really want is a top quality repair, a good price, and a little respect. That's why Speedy gives you a guarantee on all three, including the respect. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, that's what Speedy means to me. It's here, the 18-hour marathon sale at Elgin Furniture. For 18 hours only, over $220,000 of furniture and appliances have been drastically reduced. Store-wide savings up to 67% off. For 18 hours only, Friday and Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Prices will be so low that we can only afford to do it for 18 hours. Buy with no down payment, no payment whatsoever for three full months. It's the 18-hour marathon sale this Friday and Saturday. Elgin Furniture, 5217 Broadway Avenue. We were wondering why people dress up in great designer clothing, but their glasses look like they're by Mona of Montana. <laughs> now complete your designer look at DOC's 50% off the Great Designers Frame Sale. Choose styles from Gucci, Ann Klein, Neo Style, Gazelle, and others, 50% off. Plus, get your glasses in about 60 minutes or less at most DOCs. At DOC, we speak the language of the great designers. Lea la mia parola. Help a child reach out. Volunteer your time to become a big brother or sister. All bowlers appearing on 10-pin challenge receive prizes from Speedy Muffler King. Come to Speedy for mufflers, brakes, or shocks and get the respect you deserve. Here are the teams now for today's semifinal matchup here on 10-pin challenge. Representing the Wycliffe Lanes, the team of Peggy Malinowski and Pat Switzler. They have a 36-pin handicap and a three-game TV average of 228. And they face Jennifer Newman and Mark Powers, representing the Harbor Lanes in Port Clinton. They enter today's semifinal with a 63-pin handicap and a three-game TV average of 202. At stake, a spot in the championship final here on 10-pin challenge. And Jennifer Newman will start us off with a bowling average of 134. Now, like we said in the open, there's a big deficit for Malinowski and Switzler to overcome. And... Uh... Jennifer Newman's going to try and keep it that way, if not bigger. The left-hander starts us off today, and that was a problem she had in her quarterfinal round match, not able to get it to the pocket at all. That's right, missing the head pin to the right side, being a left-handed bowler. She's just pulling it across her body instead of getting that good extension. Now, she'll have to uh, make an adjustment, and I really think she's going to need to. Because as you get on in these tournaments and these matches, they get tougher and tougher. 
Well, Mark Powers pulled off some incredible spares for his team in their last match, and he's got a tough one here. Almost got to break off the sideboard, but the pin just laid in the channel and uh, never got to the nine pin. So the nine pin did not go down. They go open in the first frame, and now Peggy Malinowski. And if you are giving up a lot in handicap, like Malinowski and Switzler are, that's a great start for you, and you haven't thrown your first ball that that team goes open in the first frame. That's right. That'll give them a lot of confidence, if nothing else. Uh, she's right there. Peggy Malinowski just again ripping that rack and blowing out that five pin into the seven. Just an amazing shot. And you could tell that was right there. What a big start. Pat Switzler, a 160 average bowler. They are a very evenly matched team. Peggy has a bowling average of 159, and Pat's at 160. Now trying to go double up. Pat Switzler mixing action on the left-hand side of the head pin for a strike. What a way to pick up the, the handicap real quick. Peggy Malinowski and Pat Switzler, I would say they are ready for the semifinals as they go two strikes. Second frame, Jennifer Newman. Her problem has been getting the ball into the pocket. And again, she seems to be just honed in on throwing the ball. She's thrown it exactly the same way every time, Jim. If she could only line up to where she could hit the pocket, those might all be strikes. Now, you're, what would you do? What would you tell her right now? Well, she would have to move to the right, being a left-hander. She would have to move to the right of the lane, sort of cut down that angle that she has. Mark gave it a great try, leaving a nine pin his last time, and he knows right away that he'll only get one slicing off there of the three that were left, and they leave the five nine. They're so they're at 80 through two. They're going to have to compose themselves and just settle down to get into this match. They, they get a lot of handicaps, so they don't really need to throw the strikes, but they do need to make the spares. And again, three times, three balls to the right. Mark Powers coming up here on the right lane. Now, he'll have to make sure he hits that head pin. If he doesn't, he won't have any chance of making the spare. We're coming to you from the Palisades Palace in Wycliffe. This is the semifinal round on 10-pin challenge. Our winner today, you'll see them in the championship match in a couple of weeks. Nice try. Again, he nine gets, pin. A, gets a little bad break. He could have had a spare there, but the nine pin just wouldn't fall. So, Newman and Powers are at 89 through three with three open frames. Peggy Malinowski and Pat Switzler now of Euclid with two strikes in a row. She threw a strike to start them off in the first frame. Here she is in the third. And a split. Again, the 6, 7, 10. She comes back with a smile on her face, but she knew as soon as, soon as she threw it, Jim, she cut it a little short. There again, not getting that good extension or follow-through. Ball went up on the head pin, leaving the 6, 7, 10 split. Now, I would suggest at this point you don't try to make this spare. You can actually make it, but it's uh, your chances aren't very good. Get the count. Get the two pins. Pat, let's see if he just goes for the 6, 10. That's what he did. We'll be back with more of the semifinal match here on 10 Pin Challenge right after this. customers really want is a top quality repair, a good price, and a little respect. That's why Speedy gives you a guarantee on all three, including the respect. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, that's what Speedy means to me. It's Lazy Boy Showcase Shop's vacation days. Save now on top quality Lazy Boy furniture and get a free vacation with any purchase totaling $9.99 or more. Stay four days and three nights on us at one of these famous vacation spots and save plenty on matching Lazy Boy recliners and sofas. 
Choose one of these sofas and custom order. On sale now, only $5.99. Lazy Boy recliners, priced right at $3.99. Pack your bags today and head for one of our six new Lazy Boy showcase shops in Cleveland, Amherst, Akron, and Canton. They say you have to be a rocket scientist to understand audio equipment these days. Well, I am a rocket scientist, and I don't understand it either. But I do know that B&B Appliance helped me put together a system that sounds just great. And one of my friends was actually impressed that I'd know enough to put together a system this good. I said, hey, any rocket scientist could do it. B&B Appliance, where you get the best price and more audio for your money. Welcome back. Ted, a big switch and turnaround in this match. Peggy Malinowski and Pat Switzler were giving 27 pins coming into the match, and they've already made that up. That's right. After three frames, it's virtually an even game, so Newman and Powers have to bowl them even, and uh, I don't like their chances. We're in frame number four. Here's Peggy Malinowski. There's Peggy throwing that good ball, leaving a 10-pin ball, just deflecting a bit. The six not carrying out the 10. Pat Switzler moved to the left to make this spare. Now I think... The situation is here. They have to bowl even from here on out. Which just, they can do, I think. Don't which, you think? I mean, they are really an exceptional team. What they have to do is just make spares because Newman and Powers are forced to stay with them. Because their averages aren't quite as strong, they're going to have a harder time staying clean. So they get back into the mark department with a spare in the fourth frame. Jennifer Newman, Mark Powers, yet to get a mark in the match. Fourth frame. Three opens. Again, problems with her first ball. She cannot get she's, it to the pocket. She's and she's really guessing now. Well, what happens, Jimmy, she's frustrated and she's a little bit embarrassed. She knows she can bowl better than that. She's just not doing it. And it's a lot of pressure and a lot of heat on her there. Mark Powers with most of the pins standing right now. This would be a whale of a spare if he could pick it up. To throw his strike ball to do it. Oh, what a great shot. Just tilt the five pin over for the spare. Kind of saw him look to the heavens there. Well, maybe that'll get him started. They need to do that. So the left-hander Jennifer Newman will come over to lane 93. One of 96 here at Palisades Palace in Wickliffe. Let's see how she can do on this one. There's well, the a first time she gets it there, then she opens up with a spin. You know, believe it or not, it's hard to say, Jimmy, but that was a better shot. She went right on the nose. She just got a bad break. Mark Powers. Mark Powers, interesting note. His very first ball he ever threw on 10-pin challenge was a gutter ball. So he's coming off a long way, you might say. Absolutely. Ooh. Okay, good try. That's got what he four. had to do is hit it thin and maybe rattle him around to make that split. Picked off the four, but that was it. So they go open in the fifth and have four open frames in the match are at 114. Now with a spare up. Here is Peggy Malinowski, fifth frame. She didn't get that good follow through the last time. Let's see if she concentrates and makes the adjustment. Well, that would be an over adjustment. She made sure she got that one to the right. Didn't want to throw any more splits. Leaving the one, two, eight pin. We want to thank Don Klein, the proprietor here at Palisades Palace in Wycliffe for our hosting 10-pin challenge here through our quarterfinal round, our semifinals, and we'll be here for the championship, too. And I'll give you a program note after Pat Switzler tries to pick up this spare. A great cover. Now, next week and our championship week, we move to a different time, Saturday afternoon at 12 noon. So next week and the following week we're on at 12 noon not our normal time at one o'clock so make sure you follow us to our new spot at high noon wow nine pin wiggled a little bit but wouldn't go down peggy, peggy. Melan peggy malinowski threw such a great ball there it was so strong it just never deflected to get to the nine pin they have opened up a 23 pin lead in the match malinowski and switzler just to get here, they had to just bowl in a fantastic match against Betty Palika and Cleve Johnson, and they won by two. Oh, it was a great match. It came right down to the last ball in the 10th frame. You can't get any closer than that. It's a 13-pin lead for Melanowski and Switzler. We go back to Jennifer Newman's sixth frame. 
She made a better shot her last time up, only she got a bad break with a split. She went right back to where she was, missing the head pin right. So it's a clothesline on the left side, the one, two, four, seven. I thought that was the picket fence, you said. <laughs> I'm, I'm adjusting now, too. Oh, that's good. You're learning. Life in the Midwest. Now, let's see if Mark can pick this up. Mark Powers. <laughs> Electing to go to the right side and having all the pins knock down all the pins. What yeah. a good spare. They kind of cave in when you hit them on that side, right? Right, exactly. That's not the way we suggest making it, but uh, it works. Still trying to find the big hit. Again, Jennifer Newman missing head pin right. She's just lost. She's, she's, I feel so bad for her. She just really lost, doesn't know what to do, what kind of adjustment to make. She's sort of in a groove and just can't get out of it. They're in the seventh frame right now, and Mark Powers will try and bail them out of another mess here. Mark throws that same spare ball he just threw. Ooh, almost got it. Almost leaving the nine pin. Now, if he had just switched those two shots, it had two spares on it. Time running out on Newman and Power isn't just not enough marks in the bank for them. They're leaving too many uh, tough spares. Jennifer Newman hasn't hit the head pin but once, and when she did, she threw a split, so it's just not in the cards. Peggy Melanowski looking for a strike. She's been close the last couple of times. <laughs> Peggy Melanowski, there she goes again, ripping that rack. That's just a real strong roll on the ball when you see that five can shoot to the left like that. You could almost see it in her eyes, though. She gave a little extra time up at the line that time on the approach and then let it rip. Pat Switzler, eighth frame. The match seemingly in control for them and a spot in the championship round if they can just run out the clock here. Got a little baby split there for himself. The 4-5. Now this one here, Peggy will have to move left and try to fit that ball right in between those two pins. The ball taking out both pins. That's the only way you can really make this. So she goes after the 5-6. Five, 5-6 six. Five, six right here. Let's see if she can just squeeze it right in between those two pins. Nope. She got the 5 and didn't get it over enough to make contact with the six and they go open in the eighth frame right now though they hold a 28 pin lead in the match this match is really not over with yet jim uh, well with that opening right there that's right that put him right back into the realm of it and there's a strike and jennifer, jennifer reach to the heavens this is thank you thank yes. you they Mark? have the possibility of a 228 game, Ted, whereas uh, Malinowski and Switzler have the possibility of a 235 game. So as Ted read you, that opening in the eighth frame by Switzler and Malinowski really slowed their momentum towards earning a spot in the championship and opened the door a creek now for Mark Powers, Jennifer Newman. Can they go double up? Oh, he breaks up a split anyway and leaves the 4-7. 4-7, comes back with a little smile and says, boy, were we lucky. They almost got a break on that. That was a pretty good shot, just a little bit high. A little bit high. A double there could have put him right back into this match. All right. Lefty going here to the left side. Missed it. She missed it to the right. She has a lot of problems. Everything she's doing uh, is missed to the right. We'll have to go home and work on that. Well, they're at 174 through 9. And the best they could do would be a 204. Here's Malinowski and Switzler. Game is not over with yet. They will have to get one mark in two frames to shut out Newman and Powers. Pat Switzler. Oh, oh. Solid 10 pin in the pocket. Good shot. Very good shot. He knew it. Now Peggy will try and move and pick up this one in the corner, the 10 pin. That's right. Now you got to remember, they need to get a mark here, sort of for a cushion. Just a 10-pin standing. He moves left. And that's their second open frame. Misses it left. Near the end of the match. They went open in the eighth. And now are open right here. They still need a mark to shut out Newman and, and Powers. Uh, 
and they haven't got it yet. So it's down to the 10th frame as usual. And a spot in the championship final. Up for grabs right here. Pat Switzler. Just the pocket. Peggy Malinowski now come up to make this spare. She'll have to throw her strike ball. The one three six. If they don't get this spare, Jim, the Newman and Powers can strike out still to win this match. Boy, that's really would be an incredible comeback. Let's see if she gets it though. She oh, does. She covered it like a blanket. So one ball to finish up for them. A strike would get them a 2.04 game, which would be by far their lowest total on 10 pin challenge because they have been 235, 221, 227. And the best that Newman and Powers could do would be a 194. Pat Switzler with the finishing touches on the semifinal performance. You do that one pretty loose. This match is over. Switzler and Malinowski become our first team that have traveled the tournament trail and into the championship final as they are in at a 2.04. The ride has been good for Mark Powers and Jennifer Newman to make it this far. Remember, over 2,000 teams. That's a lot. A lot of contestants. That's over 4,000 bowlers bowled in this. Try to get this far. It's from all over northern Ohio, so uh, they can be proud. All right, Jennifer, let's see if she can scoop this one up. But Peggy Melanowski and Pat Switzler, a strong team all the way through, very solid team. Good shot! Jennifer making a spare one for the fans at home. Absolutely. And one ball to finish out their 10-pin challenge. Stay, they'll get a 184 if Mark can throw a strike. Get seven, they're a 181. We have one of our championship final teams. Peggy Melanowski and Pat Switzler are into the championship. They defeat Jennifer Newman and Mark Powers. 204 to 181. Now, before we move on on 10 pin challenge, let's take a visit to the bowling clinic with Ted Maliki. Once again, we're at Mahal's Lanes in Lakewood, Ohio. Today we want to talk about reading a lane. Now there's no great mystery about reading a lane. The lane either hooks more or it hooks less or it acts normal for you. And normal is you as an individual. If your normal ball goes into the head pin or crosses over to the one-two pocket, you have a hooking lane. That's obvious. Now if your ball is light in the pocket or misses the head pin to the right, then your lanes aren't hooking or they're oily then you must make an adjustment. It's just that simple. Now don't prejudge or expect a lane to do what you want it to do. Make sure you read that lane and adjust accordingly. Tune in again next week and we'll have another tip on the bowling clinic. Muffler King knows that all customers really want is a top quality repair, a good price, and a little respect. That's why Speedy gives you a guarantee on all three, including the respect. R-E-S-P-E-C-T, that's what Speedy means to me. It only happens once a year, and the time is now. Everything goes at impossible prices at Ohio Furniture. Best quality furniture and bedding at unheard of prices. Deep bona fide markdowns of up to 70% on Flex Steel, Cochrane, Benchcraft, Leave, On, and more. Plus, no payments, no interest for six months. 
Everything goes at all five Ohio Furniture locations. Hurry, Ohio Furniture's impossible prices won't last long. I solved my plastic problem, paid off all my credit card bills, put cash into my pocket for the home equity loan from the money store. Yeah, but how's the interest rate? Well, I got a great deal. My interest is tax deductible. Tax de what makes up the Kronheim's Furniture shopping experience? First, hand-chosen quality furniture fashions. Then, more selection. Beautiful home furnishings in traditional, country, and contemporary styles. And finally, more quality. Because Kronheim's Furniture prices are guaranteed to be the lowest. And the furniture is guaranteed to last. Kronheim's Furniture, more quality, more selection, more value. Since 1918, Kronheim's now. If you're concerned about getting rid of weeds this way, try a better way. I'm Jim Martindale, here to introduce you to the Weed Popper. Place the Weed Popper next to a weed, step down, and the weed pops right out. The Weed Popper pulls weeds without kneeling, bending, and without chemicals that may be dangerous to our groundwater supply. The Weed Popper, with its 100% lifetime guarantee, pops weeds out as easy as one, two, three. The Weed Popper, available at Handy Andy Forest City, Stombaugh, Thompson, Click, and Kmart, makes a great gift for friends who garden. Maury Povich on Monday's first report at 5.30. on 10 pin challenge receive prizes from speedy muffler king come to speedy for mufflers brakes or shocks and get the respect you deserve welcome back to 10 pin challenge everybody here from wickliffe hope you enjoyed today's semifinal match jennifer newman and mark powers come up a bit shy but three victories on 10 pin challenge before that and the long ride from port clinton so we thank you for making it did you have some fun on the show yes a lot mark what about you your first year bowling i you really stood in there very well i remember your first ball on 10 pin challenge and yeah, everything kind of got better after that yeah a little nervous at first ball but it's been fun and, and i and i will remember his clutch spares that he made in the uh, quarterfinal round to get yeah. them now right now we got some trophies for you to make the presentation here's bill kaczynski the president of the <laughs> cleveland bpa bill thank you jim jennifer mark on behalf of all the bowling proprietors, I'd like to congratulate you on making it to the semifinals of Ten Pin Challenge. Here's a couple of plaques to remember the occasion. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. And thanks for coming. <laughs> Jennifer Newman and Mark Powers from Port Clinton will call in our winning team now that will go on to the championship final. Peggy Malinowski and Pat Switzler representing Euclid. And Ted, uh, they could be very tough to beat in the final. Well, I think they will be very tough. It's just interesting to wonder what kind of preparation you're going to do for that final match. And before we talk about that, how about overcoming that huge handicap difference here? 27 pins coming into the match. Were you nervous about that? Yeah, very nervous. I would imagine you really have to come out and mark early. Yeah, it was really tough at first. <laughs> All right, let's get back to Ted's uh, question. What are you going to do now, preparation? Yeah, a little bit of practice, a little bit of relaxing. <laughs> yeah, that's relaxing. <laughs> Try and be as relaxed as possible when you get up here, just like Ted and I, for the, yeah, for the championship, right. and you'll do fine. All right, congratulations to you. We'll see you in a couple of weeks now in the championship. And Ted and I look forward to our final semifinal round match coming up next week. Remember, we'll be on at 12 noon. Until then, we'll see you next week on 10 Pin Challenge.